In 1989, I played a game on the Sega Genesis for the first time. The game was one that had captivated me in the arcades, and seeing it much closer realized as a home port than what my regular NES was capable of blew me away. The game was Altered Beast, but the game wasn't the main thing that captured my attention that day. That was saved for the sweet Sega control pad. In 1991, the Super Nintendo debuted and my brother brought one home. Although I still felt the Genesis superior, I no longer felt I can argue the controller. It would take nearly two years and the release of Street Fighter, but in September of 1993, the Genesis had its own six action button controller and a game to give players a reason to pick it up. In addition to the three new action buttons, there was one more new button. This is Retro Impressions. Let's talk about the mode button. To understand the mode button and issues associated with the six button gamepad, it's important to understand how the Genesis interpolates controller input, starting with the original control pad. Let's first look at the plug. The Genesis uses a DE9 plug to connect the controller to the system. It was fairly standard for the time and is the same plug as the Genesis SG-1000, the Master System, the Atari 2600, 7800, and the 3DO, among others. This controller port allows for nine connections. Let's go over how it's wired on the Genesis. Pin one is the D-pad dedicated up. Two is D-pad dedicated down. Three is output one. Four is output two. Five is a five volt bus line that sends power to the controller. Six is output three. Seven is the select signal. 8 is a ground line, and 9 is output 4. As you might have noticed at this point, there are only 6 outputs available, yet the 3 button gamepad has 8 total outputs it's capable of. This is accomplished using a 4 connection 2 to 1 multiplexer chip. In simple terms, this chip allows 2 inputs to be sent via a single output. Inputs are assigned to a low and high side. The Genesis sends a request via the select signal saying, hey controller, what buttons are currently pushed on the high side, followed by a signal saying, hey controller, what buttons are currently pushed on the low side? It can take as little time as 20 microseconds for an inquiry to register an answer. The cycle of requesting the high result followed by the low result will continue until the system is powered off. Let's go back to the controller plug and see exactly how the input buttons are wired. Pin one is dedicated up. 2 is dedicated down, 3 is left, 4 is right, 6 is button B, it's assigned to the high side, and button A, which is assigned to the low side, 9 is button C, assigned to the high side, and start, which is assigned to the low side. So with that covered, let's move on to the much more complex 6 button controller. In addition to the three extra action buttons, we are also given a mode button. So what's it for? Well, the simple answer is backwards compatibility. If the user held the mode button when turning on the system, it allowed the controller to function like a three button control pad. This solved issues with certain older titles that would act bizarrely when played in six button mode. This doesn't really answer the question as to why these issues were happening or how the mode button actually works. So let's cover it. Again, it's back to where controller meets console with the plug. The six button is wired identical to the three button control pad. There are still only six outputs, but now there are four new inputs that need to be dealt with. So how was this accomplished while still maintaining backwards compatibility with nearly all games? Inside, we find the multiplexer chip used in the three button is now absent. Sega has instead opted for a custom microcontroller the Sega 315-5638 was only used in this controller and in the controls for the Sega Nomad. It's designed to work very similar to the 2 to 1 multiplexer used in the 3 button with a few key differences. The 3 button control pad cycles every pulse group. To be clear, a pulse group is one high signal followed by one low signal. The 6 button has an internal counter that executes four distinct pulse groups before resetting and starting again. Let's look at how the new inputs are assigned. Pin one is no longer dedicated. 
up is now assigned on the high and low side. The Z button is assigned here as well on what I will refer to as the extended high side. Two is no longer dedicated down. Down is now assigned on the high and low side. The Y button is assigned to the extended high side. Three is left, assigned to the high side. The X button is assigned to the extended high side. Four is right, assigned to the high side. The Mode button is assigned to the extended high side. Let's look at exactly how the controller works in different situations, starting with how the controller works when a game supports the six button controller. The first and second pulse group are identical to the three button gamepad. The third pulse group is used for games to identify a six button compatible. If the game identifies a six button compatible, the controller sends the extra data for the new buttons during the fourth pulse group on what I referred to earlier as the high extended line. At the end of this group, the counter resets the chip and the pulse group order starts over. Next, let's look at how the controller works when the game doesn't support six button mode. The first and second pulse group are again identical to the three button controller. The third pulse group is used for games to identify as six button compatible. If the game not identifies as six button compatible, the controller resets and starts the cycle again with pulse group one. Because the counter reset the controller after the third pulse group, the fourth pulse group isn't used. So what happens with games that have issues with this controller? There are a few issues that can happen, but let's start with the basics. The first and second pulse group are again identical to the three button controller. The third pulse group is used for games to identify as six button compatible. For reasons I'll cover in a minute, a few older games will false identify here and not reset the counter. Because a game false identifies as six button compatible, the fourth pulse group happens and these are the signals that cause controller issue in some games. A couple reasons why some of these older games had issues with the six button controller and false identify are, the custom chip in the six button controller is slower to relay the inputs than the multiplexer used in the three button, and some games weren't programmed to anticipate this very slight delay. A couple games are incorrectly programmed to read the controller more than twice per frame, causing these games to false identify as six button compatible during the third pulse group. So what exactly does the mode button do if you hold it down when you turn on your system? It tells the internal counter to only use the first pulse group and disregard groups two through four. This ensures the controller never enters into the third pulse group and allows the game to mistakenly self-identify as six button compatible. It's a function that could have easily been assigned to any button on the controller, but understandably so was assigned to a special out of the way button, so there was little chance of accidental activation. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a positive or negative comment letting me know your thoughts. Click subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'm Genovi, and this has been Retro Impressions and Reviews.